Hello, hello. This is going to be a super fast, super simple tutorial on setting up PBRs in Blender. Uh, what you see here is the final product. This is simply two planes. If I swap the viewport mode, you'll see there's nothing going on. And we'll just kind of recreate this thing from scratch. So let's get into it. Start a new file. Get rid of this guy. See you soon. Uh, first thing you want to do is get some PBRs. Um, I use Texture Haven because they're, they're good and they're Creative Commons, so you can use them on whatever you want, whatever project, personal, professional, whatever. Um, I use this one and this one. And all you have to do is go to All Maps and choose the version that works best in your system. Um, I'm using 4K PNGs, and it looks fine to my eye, but you know, if you have, a, if you have an older system or maybe a laptop, you probably want to step down to, to one of these to make sure your, your memory doesn't just disappear immediately. Yeah, once you download those and unzip them, you'll see something like this. And it's just a handful of image files. I, I won't really get into why they're named what they are and why they look how they look. You can look all that stuff up. That's uh, not, not really what we were focused on. So let's head back to our Blender file. And first thing I'm gonna do is head to Preferences, uh, go to Add-ons, and if you haven't already, make sure Node Wrangler is checked. And save it however, you know, auto-save or save manually. We're gonna need that hotkey to, to make all this stuff do its thing. <clears throat> so Shift A, Mesh, Plane, uh, scale it up. Uh, before we do anything else, uh, tab into it, and you'll see it's just one simple flat plane. Um, and for the textures to really like do their thing, they need some geometry to displace and mess with. So just right click it, subdivide, and we'll do a 20, which should be more than enough. We can always add more later. Um, tab back out to object mode, and that's all you need to do as far as uh, setting up the actual object goes. So drag up a window. If you, if you don't have one open already, just you know get the crosshairs in the corner, drag it up, go to your shader editor. With your object selected here, your, your new plane, head to your materials tab right over here, material properties, and make a new one. I'm gonna call it Dirty Boy. So that's what it's gonna be. Um, you can see it popped up immediately over here. You have the right texture, it's Dirty Boy, it says right there at the top. Um, and make sure that your principal uh, BSDF node is selected. If you don't know about node networks and stuff, you don't have to. Don't worry. We're not going to focus on that at all, really. Make one minor tweak, maybe. But if this is all confusing to you, don't worry. Uh, so make sure that's selected and hit Control Shift T. And you're going to pop up that lets you choose files for uh, Node Wrangler to, to hook up. So we'll head to our PBRs and we'll start with this rocks and ground, grab these files, and just drag select them. It's just these guys. And let Node Wrangler do its thing. And that's it. Um, that stuff's all done. We don't have to look at that right now. So let's just shrink this back down. Uh, you don't see anything yet because we're not in the right view mode. So let's go to render preview. Perfect, ship it. Not quite. Let's hook up a couple other minor things. So um, head up here to the little camera icon, which is your rendering properties. And right now it's on uh, Eevee. He doesn't understand some of these some of these nodes. So just go to cycles. And as of now, he still wants anything. That's right. Now that we're in cycles, we can head back to our material properties down here. And let's just collapse the stuff we don't need. And go to settings and the surface drop down. And right here you see displacement. Bump only. You just switch that to displacement and bump. And you get that. So <clears throat> now the geometry that we put into the plane. Uh, is being manipulated by the texture information. And we're seeing some stuff. Um, it looks okay. It's a little uh, wonky. A little, a little like 90s 3D engine. Flat planes with textures just kind of strapped on there, you know. It's a little, a little awkward. So, fast way to fix that. Go to your modifier, the wrench. And throw a subdivision surface modifier on there. Probably two is enough. And that, that really kind of helps get rid of that feeling to some degree. You can keep bumping it up to, to tweak it further. And if you want, as you can see, there's there's some, like like this rock here does not need to be a spike like that. There's some of that kind of stuff going on. Um, and there's one spot you can tweak in your node network to fix that. It's right here. Displacement. You see a scale right here? You can change the number there and it'll help flatten that stuff out and make it feel like kind of more contextual to the, the texture, you know, not default mode. It feels a little more considered, right? Uh, this feels a lot more natural to my eye, so 
that's one minor thing you can tweak with the actual node network if you want. And that's kind of it, you know? If you know Blender, uh, you, you can go on from here and do a bunch of stuff. And, and it's always gonna work just like that. So that's cool. Go forth, have fun. Uh, if you're kind of new to Blender, um, I'll show you how to take it a step further to get kind of more like what we saw with the original file when I first uh, started, where there's some extra textures and some light and some cool stuff. Um, so let's just look that up real quick. Uh, it's the exact same thing. Shift A, mesh, plane, scale it up, tap into it, subdivide it. So what we got now is just a big square plane with some geometry to, to receive the texture information. Go to materials, make a new one. Clean boy. Just like before, we need to pop open our shader. Probably shouldn't have closed it in the first place. Make sure this uh, principal BSDF is selected. Control Shift T. And again, we're going to select some images to hook up. Uh, this time we're going to use these ones. Same deal, uh, same exact process, just you know, different texture. So we'll back up, select all those, and let Node Wrangler do its thing. And there you go. So now um, we can just move this around and it'll start to really feel as though these two elements are interacting, right? Let's get rid of this again. And so it's like an overgrown, dilapidated old um, structure of some sort. You know, just for example, you can mix a lot of textures up like this. It works really well for like grass, rocks, dirt, and then a path or a gra like dirt like this within grass coming out of it in selective places. It works really well for stuff like that. Um, and there's a lot more tweaking you can do, but the, just for simpleness, this is like a pretty straightforward process. Um, if you want to see like the real, the real feel of everything, uh, select your light that's in the scene and change it to sun. Uh, turn it down to something more like two. And then um, you can rotate that around to see the texture interact with, with the other texture, right? Start to see some shadows drag across the surface, some moodier light. You can add another light. We'll do just like a, a regular point light. And as you move that around, you'll start to see the texture really, really start to respond to light in a more interesting way. That's about it. Yeah, just head back to Texture Haven and just start to hook some of these up and see how they see how they feel, see what they do. Uh, bash them together, make some texture balls, play with the uh, the settings of Node Wrangler, the Node Network that it creates for you, and see what happens. But uh, yeah, that's it. It's that simple. So I hope this helps somebody out there. Um, be putting out a few more of these type tutorials that are five seconds of work for something that actually has a lot of visual fidelity. And I'm going to take this particular kind of setup and take it into Photoshop and show you how to use some default stuff, default smudge tool that Photoshop provides and some, some standard brushes to take this and make it look more like a painting than a, a render from like a mid fidelity game engine. So yeah, if you're interested in that kind of thing, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, thanks for listening.